After an angry mob stormed the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Hundreds of pro-Trump supporters intent on thwarting the certification of Joe Biden's presidential election win forced their way into the building and occupied the House and Senate chambers. The chaotic scenes, previously unimaginable in the world's oldest constitutional democracy, led to national and international outrage. A growing number of politicians are blaming President Trump for stoking up anger with baseless allegations of voter fraud. And now, several senior White House officials have resigned from their roles. Hermione G reports. A nighttime standoff outside the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. National Guard troops were deployed to keep the peace as President Trump's supporters refused to obey a curfew following a day of violence that left four people dead. Earlier, a mob had stormed Congress where lawmakers had begun the certification of President-elect Joe Biden's victory. Trump has been accused of egging on the rioters, having spent weeks falsely attacking the integrity of the election. The nation's elected representatives were seen scrambling to crouch under desks and don gas masks while police tried to barricade the building. The storming of the Capitol brought proceedings to an abrupt halt as protesters took over the offices and corridors of one of America's seats of political power. A somber Joe Biden, who's less than two weeks away from being inaugurated, said American democracy was under unprecedented assault. The words of a president matter, no matter how good or bad that president is. At their best, the words of a president can inspire. At their worst, they can incite. Biden urged Trump to condemn the violence. The president resisted, but did tell his supporters to go home. I know you're pain. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. Some of his supporters heeded the call and left, but many more remained on Capitol Hill. Our reporter, Colin Campbell, is standing by for us in Washington, D.C. Good morning, Colin. Four people dead, 52 people at least arrested, lots of damage to the Capitol buildings, and yet Congress sitting, trying to restore normalcy. That's right. Good morning, Oliver. Very tumultuous events happening at the U.S. Capitol Wednesday afternoon that disrupted a tradition that has spanned decades, and that is certifying the Electoral College votes, which was delayed for several hours, but has now since resumed way into the night, into the wee hours of the morning. Right now, the House is voting on the objection of certifying the votes of the Electoral College in the state of Pennsylvania. That objection is expected to fail, as it did in the Senate, 92 to 7. But so far, 133 Republicans have already voted to support that objection to the certified votes in the state of Pennsylvania. However, if the Republicans do continue to agree to that objection, that number isn't expected to rise much higher than 140 votes. And already there have been uh, 192 votes rejecting that objection. So it's already in, an, in a sense failed. But of course, that vote has to be completed. But yes, we had four deaths, 52 arrests, 14 police officers injured. The the city of Washington, D.C. itself is under a citywide curfew until Thursday morning, just giving you an idea and a sense of the urgency and just how detrimental it was for these looters and rioters that marauded through the Capitol building and its effect on the city, the capital city of the United States. I imagine once the dust has settled somewhat on this, we're going to see a big investigation as to how exactly they were able to gain access to those buildings. That's right. And, you know, what people have been talking about is just how under the police forces and the security underestimated just the aggression coming from these, these demonstrators. Some call them 
domestic terrorists, actually, if you look up the, the definition of domestic terrorism, trying to influence uh, uh, and sway uh, politics through the use of violence. Some people say that it would fit underneath this. But of course, they came in as protesters, things escalated, and they left and were pushed out of the Capitol building as some would call terrorists. And, of course, we saw a different reaction from protesters from the Black Lives Matter movement, if you remember, when the White House, uh, the the president of the United States walked out of the White House, and it was allowed for law enforcement officers to use tear gas on protesters for the president to walk through the crowd and go into a photo op with a Bible in front of a nearby church. Well, there, they were largely controlled. Tear gas, uh, rubber bullets. On Wednesday, however, a different and some people say it has to be demographic. Colin Campbell joining us there from Washington, D.C. Thank you very much indeed.